Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Katie Jane Hughes, and this is Uncut with KJH, a uncut video series so that you get to see the good, the bad, and everything in between. I'm gonna do a product, I'm gonna do a six product face. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six products on my face completely. Nothing more, nothing less, promise. I like doing these videos because I think it's a really good opportunity to show you how little you actually do need to create a full, uh, impactful makeup look. And currently I have nothing on my skin. I've been sleeping. I'm going to show you a product, but it's not going to get used in this video um, for the sake of me saying it's six products only. This Ranavat um, Brightening Saffron Serum smells amazing. I have a bigger bottle in my bathroom. That's a mini bottle that I'm saving for my friend Becca, who actually told me about that brand. Um, anyway, the reason why I'm not going to put anything on my skin is because I'm actually going to start with Sunny Days from Tower 28. This is a tinted SPF um, foundation type product. Uh, with an SPF of 30. And I'm gonna use the shade Mulholland. So the video that I'm about to do, I think gives you an opportunity to see like how little you really need to um, create a bold look easily in hopefully less than 10 minutes. I'm gonna use a brush just cause I prefer a brush for thin fingers, but um, you can totally use your hands with a product like this. So I'm just gonna apply it to the T-zone specifically the forehead because that's where the sun gets me um but yeah you don't need all you don't need loads and loads and loads of stuff it can be quite simple let me just pull my exposure down just a little and i feel like it was a little bit bright it's my beautiful new lights that i'm still getting used to so um what can i tell you i feel like i got a request the other day for um career advice or like how my career started so maybe i'll talk about that during this video what is on my scalp maybe i'll talk about that during this video um i have been a makeup artist in new york city for the past uh 10 years i actually moved here um as a makeup artist and a manicurist working for a brand called butter london um that was a great experience but i was also very 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 ready for it to be done when it was because it was kind of holding me back from the growth that I've seen since. Um, and that was a really great learning experience because you know, you don't, um, even though I was secure and I was comfortable in that job, uh, cause I was on salary, I had health insurance, all that stuff, which you need very much in America. Um, I really wasn't that happy at the end. So then when that role was terminated, I was, excited um and i was like an unleashed animal on social media just posting about whatever it was that i wanted to post about um and just sort of showing the world what it was that i knew i could do whereas when you work with a brand your my experience with this brand was amazing don't get me wrong but when you work with a brand exclusively you're so 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 exclusive you can't really talk about anything else and that's just not my identity as a makeup artist i don't believe that we all have only one brand of makeup products in our makeup bag. Yeah, you might have a lot of Charlotte Tilbury, you might have a lot of Chanel, but I don't feel like we have, you know, only one, ba one, one bag. But pre-dating my um, job that brought me to New York, um, my husband's American, so that's actually really what brought me to New York, um, American Egyptian. This is the, sh um, what do you call it? The Lancome Ultra Laiton Concealer. Before pre-dating New York, I, um, lived in London with my husband Tarek and we um, lived in Holland Park in Holland Park Muse that was my address it was so cute and I worked at Space and K and all the whilst working at Space and K I was assisting other makeup artists in the industry so sort of doing a little bit of nails on the side because it was what I was qualified to do um, from just my former days of working in a nail salon in my hometown um, in the northwest of England to then moving to London and working in Space and K, all the while assisting the makeup artists that I love. Like, I worked with Sharon Dosett, I worked with Alexander Byrne, Al Andrew, uh, Andrew Gallimore, um, Ashley Ward, um, who's no longer with us. She was an amazing makeup artist. Um, and I just was at Alex Box. I had some amazing opportunities and amazing experiences, a lot of which were actually me as the manicurist working alongside of a lot of these makeup artists, which was an interesting perspective and an interesting position to be in because obviously, you know, I wanted to be a makeup artist. So to, to have like a front row seat 
to a lot of different makeup artists that I looked up to in my career. It was amazing. So, just to the makeup for a second. I've applied a sheer coat of this and a little bit of this concentrated like in areas for a boost of coverage. Next, I'm gonna use contour. This is the M Cosmetics Terra So Soft. Um, you don't need much of this at all. Hopefully I'm speaking loud enough, but I feel like, um, I feel like I'm very close to the camera, so hopefully I am. If you pick up from the brush, to, from the tube, you'll have less transfer, which is actually gives you more control. So worth um, worth trying that. If you have always gone like that and then you've, you're you blending for ages, just pick it up with the brush instead and see if you get a better effect. I just had my friend Paris in town for a week. So if my accent is stronger, then she's to thank. Um, anyway, what else about my career? So yes, I was 23, lived in London, uh, newly married to an American Egyptian and we uh, were sort of living in London because we were waiting for sort of green card stuff because we knew eventually we wanted to come back to New York or to the States. Chicago was the idea but um, New York became an option um, for my bottle London thing. Anyway, moved back to the UK and loved working at Space and K. Space and K was the best, best, best school because you get to like put makeup on people that just walk in the store and be like, oh, can I have a, can I try this? And if you've got time and there's nothing else to be doing, you can just sit and have a little play date with a stranger that, that might become a friend. It's awesome. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend working in a retail environment over school any day. Um, makeup school, that is. Not to dismiss education at all. But makeup school for fashion and editorial and celebrity isn't so important really just good skill is and being a yes person and being in the right city and so um, and assisting is very important too just to understand a lot about how it goes um and so my sort of space and k days were really those days where i just understood product learned about what products can do um and actually built my kit a lot of my kit my former kit um, with space and case stuff. I'm gonna use a little bit of this around the mouth, just a touch, just there. She's she's contoured. Next up, blush. When you contour, you're actually taking adding a lot of grey to the face. Excuse me. I had a fully vegan meal last night and it didn't actually sit super well with me. It mean, gave me a bit of tummy ache, but even though it was absolutely amazing. Um, the When you contour a face, you're actually adding a lot of grey in ways. So it's nice to be able to bring that back. This is another version of the sticks from M Cosmetics. This one is called So Soft Strawberry. Same deal, picking it up with a brush. And I'm actually going to go quite bold because I love a bold pink cheek. Um... Yeah, it's hard to talk about things without actual, actually a and a in front of you, like without actually prompted questions, but hopefully I gave you a little bit of a context and background on my career history and how I got started. Um, and then how I got started in New York, I was honestly obviously working with a brand, but then by the time I left the brand, I was already semi-established here and had a little bit of a social, small social following. But I think having the opportunity to get, to post about more than just one brand on social media gave me the opportunity to sort of just share the world editorially via my Instagram platform, what it was that I wanted people to see in me and my skill. And so um, I always knew that nails was kind of a stepping stone. My, my mom actually was like, I was a high school and a college dropout and everything. I didn't finish any education. I'm not encouraging that at all. It just wasn't for me. I got homeschooled and it just wasn't ever really a major fit. I found that at my schools, there wasn't so much emphasis on the kids that struggled and I was one of the kids that struggled with understanding a lot. And so I felt like I always was like falling behind and just never really understood things and just felt like I needed to be handheld but didn't feel like that handholding hand holding was there. Um, and so I left school when I was 14, got homeschooled and then um, went to college for theater and stuff but that wasn't for me either. And it, I just guess I realized it was one of those people that has to get you for foot into an industry in whatever way, interning type of way, and work your way up. And that's okay too. Um, there's many, many ways to get to where you want to be. Um, anyway, my mum basically was like, go work in a nail shop. 
on learn a skill. This was when I was 17. So go like work, work in an L shop and learn a skill. And so I worked in an L shop and my boss was called Jenny. She was great. There was another girl there called Katie who was actually really mean to me. And she, um, I had to be called Jane because that she was already Katie. So it would have been confusing for the books back then, I guess. Can't have two Katie's in one establishment. Um, but yeah, this other girl, Katie, was quite, quite not very friendly. But anyway, um, a little bit of this on the lip too. But all of these things, all of these experiences, whether they were good or a little negative, they're all part of it. And I think it's uh, all part of the learning and all part of the growing. I think it's, I think it's okay in the end. Even though it might feel annoying then, it just teaches you how to respond. It teaches you how to, teaches you how to um, deal with those things and how to grow. This is Endless Cacao from Make It Forever. And honestly, I'm just going to do mascara and that might be it. But do you see like how fresh and quick and I just need to get rid of my concealer, the creases. A lot of people ask me a lot. They're like, how do I get more longevity out of makeup? Honestly, longevity and makeup pretty much comes from the prep. The products matter too, but the prep is very, very key. My prep was sunny days exclusively from Tower 28 and it's on my eyelids and it's creasing, but that's fine because I applied too much there. So all that you have to do is you just remove it. It's not that serious. Um, I think we get a little caught up about, is it Tower 28 make waves, did I say that? Um, we get a little caught up in like, you know, oh, the product doesn't do very well because it's creasing or it's moving. There's different ways to use things. Wow, my eyelashes look really good. There's different ways to use things um, and you know, you just have to figure out the ways in which a product needs to be used for you and your skin type. Um, and this is kind of the makeup look that I would start with as a base to build upon. So I would do this look, I'm so tired. I would do this look, I could have slept in for three more hours today, but I really wanted to shoot some YouTubes. Um, and I have to get my nails done at 10 and I'm doing Kate Bosworth with a full three. Quite a busy day. Um, what was I saying? This is a look that I would typically build on for the rest of the day. So I would start with this perhaps, maybe I was doing interviews or press things or whatever. I would start with this um, and then I would add to it with maybe liners or a darker lip. I'm just gonna use Endless Cacao as a freckle pen because I don't wanna break the rules. And if I wanted to, I could actually use this as a shadow and just sort of start shading with it and just create little dimension from where the concealer took it away. And this is actually a thing that I really like is to not conceal all the way up to the lash line because it gives you a little bit more, oop. And I think I'm done. Thank you for watching. Pop any questions in the box below. Please subscribe if you haven't. And if you feel like this is something that would help a friend, feel free to share it with them. Thank you, lots of love. Pop any questions below.